Today on Papa's Projects, finally got everything off the racks for the inverters. We still have the batteries on the racks, but we got rid of the top half and mounted everything on the wall. And we added this 12,000 watt low frequency inverter that can surge to 36,000 watts. So that's something we'll be wiring up in the future. But right now, everything's connected back together and it's running perfect. Um, I get comments about wanting to switch over to lithium ion battery so I can run stuff overnight. One of the things I did when I designed this was I just wanted to run stuff during the day and I'm accomplishing that goal. My grid power usage is only 10 to 15 kilowatts a day. And it's staying between 450 and 600 kilowatts for the month. So my bill's gonna be like 800 to $1,000 for my grid power for the year. There's no need for me with these AGM batteries that I have I'm not even running these things anywhere near the 50% capacity. Um, when I'm running this stuff during the day on these two 48 volt systems, I'm running my mini splits, my pool pump, my pool heater, and my battery bank is pretty much like that right now. It stays way up there doesn't get below 53 volts all day long while I'm running three, 4,000 watts, um, like 50, 50 amps worth of current running through these things. This thing right now, I've got that down in the morning. I am actually using this inverter to charge my battery bank over here for these four inverters on my AGM batteries. And right now, it's at 26.9, 27, and 27.1. And it's 7.15 in the morning on a Saturday. And so this, I will actually use to run this freezer this freezer and that refrigerator freezer and some lights outside overnight. But I really don't run anything else on it. If I really needed to, this thing is like 25.5 at the end of the day for this 24 uh, volt battery bank. If I really needed to run an air conditioner overnight, I could probably run one of my mini splits overnight and you know if the power went out, but that hasn't happened. I'm like 100% power, zero outages for the last six years. <laughs> so we're very consistent. But my whole purpose was to reduce my bill. And if I wouldn't have done anything two years ago, my bill would have been close to $6,000. Now my electric grid bill is right, it's going to be between $800 and $1,000. And all this equipment will last me 10, 15 years. And the way that I don't run these batteries down anywhere near the 50% capacity, like at 12 volts, I keep it well above, um, like I said, these batteries are 25.1, 25.2 when I get up in the morning. And they, right now it's seven o'clock in the morning, I'm already charging these batteries up using this off-grid UL listed, or I can plug it into this one as well. And then I can also use, take this one and charge my battery bank using this one because they're, they're all up. Um, they're all able to work independently with each other. So uh, it's a pure sine wave on all these. So, just wanted to give you an update. Um, for those that wanna suggest that I kick this system to the curb and just use the 48 volt, that's not my purpose. I have no desire to go out and buy a lithium ion phosphate battery at this time um, when everything that I have, the way I use it, will last me 
well over 10 years. So um, I've built this system. If this one goes down, I've got backups over here. And as I went along, I was learning, started out with this system, then I moved to these two, and now I'm moving over to this 12,000, as where this is 5,000 watts off grid. This is 6,500, and these are 2,400 each. So I got plenty of options, depending on what I want to use for the day, because this will actually put out split phase. I can do 120, 208, 220, 230. I can do the same thing with this one. This one I would have to parallel with another one in order to get split phase where I could use 220, 230. And these just won't give me anything but 110, 120 volts. So plenty of options here. I can, and these are, every one of them are grid assist. They're not grid tie. Not one of these can be used for grid tie. Um, so on these grid assist, um, I can actually hook it up overnight if I wanted to, or I could just plug it into this outlet over here. And then I could run a mini split overnight. And if my batteries go below whatever my set parameter is for my batteries on any of these battery banks, then it'll start charging off the grid overnight. But my usage overnight is very minimal. Uh, last year, my highest electric bill using my main two central ACs on grid power in Phoenix when it's 115 degrees out during the day and 102 overnight was only $175 for the month. So, And that's running my pool pump and heating my pool and everything else. So not a big deal. Um, Really have no desire to go out and buy lithium ion phosphates at this time because what I have is working perfectly for me and I really don't want to drop four, five, six thousand dollars on something when my system works perfectly for me the way that I designed it to work for me. So I appreciate the, the help and the comments, but um, I'm not looking for efficiency of the 48 volt over the 24 volt. Um, when I did it, I wanted to be able to learn about the 24 volt system and the 48 volt system so that when friends and family might want to learn about this or my neighbors, I can share it with them for free and I can explain to them how to install this stuff. So. Um, once again, I really appreciate the comments. Um, and I made some mistakes. I kept calling this a low voltage when it's a low frequency. So I apologize for that. And I was calling a Fang Poussin ch um, charger a inverter by mistake when I was talking about it. So please excuse me for those. But I'm just an average DIY guy didn't go to college, didn't go to university. I just watched videos and read articles and was able to do all this without any help, except for just learning off of YouTube or watching videos. And it's been running flawlessly for a year and a half, two years now. And we absolutely love having this off-grid system. And we love the fact that we have more, more electricity than we need for the usage throughout the day. And you know, yesterday we used the central air at night for like a half hour. We used the oven in the house for like an hour and a half yesterday. And the Everything else that we used in there, we only used 14 kilowatts for the entire day. And it was 90 degrees out yesterday. So, and we were running our pool pump and our pool heater. So, anyways, just wanted to share with you. Um, you know, my, for a lot of people, they have different ideas of what they want to use their stuff for. So, hopefully, by 
looking on my channel, you can find out one of some of the benefits and the drawbacks on these 24 volt, 24, 100 watt, 120 volt AC inverters. And then you can find out the benefits and drawbacks on these 48 volt systems. And, you know, like I said, this one is split phase. I can run, I can run that 120 volt mini split heat pump to air condition the garage. And I can run this 230 volt mini split 18,000 BTU heat pump at the same time off of this one inverter. I'll be able to do the exact same thing off of this. Now, if I wanted to, I could hook this up closer to my central AC and I could run the grid power assist into it, run the 230 volts, 208 or 230 into that. And I would be able to start my three and a half and four ton air conditioners during the day. And I could run those because I can hook up 7,000 watts of panels on the two MPP charge controllers in this unit. I gotta keep it below 150 volts on each MPP charge controller, but I can hook up 7,000 watts on each one of those for 14,000 watts on this 12,000 um, watt inverter. And this thing will surge to 36,000 watts. So I could definitely fire up those with grid assist on this and if i wanted to during the day i could not use these and then i could reconfigure my panels um to be able to so that'd be 56 250 watt panels that i would have to dedicate to this one inverter um to be able to run those so and i'm not sure in the amps on those um, I know my pool pump, 230 volt pool pump uses 30 amps when it's running. Um, but that's a 12 and a half ton. And my main air conditioners are three and a half and four ton, um, air conditioners. So that's something in the future we might try and do, but I would definitely have to have grid assist to fire those compressors up and everything and then after it goes to um after it fires up using the grid assist it would just run off the solar panels but the one thing about those is they will cycle on and cycle off these cycle on and cycle off but usually if you set this thing for like 72 degrees it'll go down to like 67 degrees or up to 74 degrees and it'll stay running the compressor's still going and it's still pushing out cool air but it doesn't completely really shut down as the way the main heat pumps on your house your three and a half four tons do those will shut down and they need a huge amount of current to start back up as where these when they start out they start out like 40 40 watts just running the blower motor. And as that compressor kicks in, they slowly go up like 50, 75 watts for a couple of seconds. And then they move up and go up another 50, 75 watts. So these don't get the surge of current like it does on the main heat pumps on my house. So that'll be something interesting later on to do because if we wanted to, and we usually don't use our downstairs too often, we use our upstairs. So that's a three and a half ton upstairs, it's a four ton downstairs. So this thing could easily, with me hooking this up grid assist, could easily start up that three and a half ton and run that all day long upstairs. And then I could run my two mini splits downstairs on any of these systems over here, because I'd have plenty so I might have to take like those off, um, take the solar panels I use on this and move it over to this one and then, you know, shift my solar panels over to that main big one. But that'll be a project that we're gonna do 
it's uh, only like April 15th, so <laughs> got plenty of time before the heat really starts hitting. Although it's going to be 98 this week, so out here in Phoenix. Anyways, uh, just wanted to share with you that I've got that one installed on the wall, and we'll be looking at configuring the panels so we can get that beast up and running. Looking forward to having that thing up. That's going to be quite a bit of electricity coming out of that that I'll be able to use, that I'll be producing. So please like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and we hope you have a wonderful and truly blessed day. We'll see you soon.